Hello 8th grade, my name is Mr. Rogers and you're watching the video lecture for section 3-3 in our book, The Sun and Force and Fluids. And today our lesson objectives are two of them. We have two of them. So we want to be able to explain what buoyant force is and we also want to be able to explain how density affects if an object sinks or if it floats. Seems simple enough but there's a lot actually to um, the actual physics of it. So first of all, we've had our, our buddy uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger helping us out and Arnold, it looks like you're, you're studying for a new role there. I uh, can't quite tell what it is. I'm a cop, you idiot! Hey, hey, no need for na name calling. Is uh, no good morning or anything like that? Can I just get a hello? Good morning. Oh, okay. Good morning to you, too. Good to see you there. So, uh, what, what, who, what, what detective or what uh, cop are you playing there? I'm Detective John Kimball. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I can't wait to see that movie. So, well, maybe you want to come back in later on and help us out. So, point and force, guys. The buoyant force on an object. Buoyant force acts in the upward direction against the force of gravity, so it makes an object feel lighter. So when you get into water, you feel less heavy because of that buoyant force. And the way this happens is we have fluid exerts pressure on all surfaces of a submerged object. So that means if it's under, underwater, it's pushing down, it's pushing on the sides, and it's pushing up. So as pressure increases, as pressure increases with depth, the upward pressure is greater than the downward pressure and that equals that buoyant force. So since the object's de deeper at the bottom of the object, there's more force pushing up than there is pushing down because the deeper you go, the more pressure there is. So there's more of that upward pressure, and that creates that buoyancy, which makes things float. Now, with that being said, though, wouldn't all things float if they're in water? Because they all have a buoyant force. And this is true, but we're going to kind of explain why that wouldn't necessarily be true all the time. But first, here's my, uh, my nice picture here. And we'll just have this kind of blue egg is submerged in the water and my arrows, the size of the arrows kind of represent the amount of buoyant force. So you can see the top of the egg you know is not as deep in the water as the bottom of the egg so there's less pressure pushing down and there's more pressure pushing up which creates that buoyant force. If that's that upward push since the object is deeper here at the bottom there's more force pushing up and that creates that buoyant force. Just another visual way of kind of looking at um, what creates that buoyant force? It's because that object's a little bit deeper. It's that upward push of that water pressure um, pushing up on our, our blue wake here in our picture. So going back to our question of why doesn't everything float? Everything has buoyancy if it's in water. Why doesn't everything float? We care about one key idea, and that's the idea of density. And density, simply put, is mass divided by volume, the amount of mass in a given volume. And density can change. We can change density fairly easily of substances by changing its shape or by changing the mass of the object. So if we change either one of those, it's going to change the density. And kind of the quick rule of thumb there is most of it's pretty obvious here. An object more dense than the fluid will sink. So if it's more dense, it's going to sink, like a stone in water. If it's less dense, then it will float. Think of a piece of wood floating on top of the water. And the third one here, if it's equal density, it will float at, at a constant level. So with our bob, when I made my bob float at a constant level or hover, um, that density had matched that of the water. So it was kind of hovering. It wasn't floating, it wasn't sinking. It was hovering there in the middle. So you can change density by changing the volume. When you increase the volume, it displaces more water and increases the buoyant force. So the idea there is, you know, how do we get these massive ships? Think about an aircraft carrier. They're basically tons and tons and tons of steel. Well, steel is more dense than water. It should sink. Well, what we can do is we can change its volume. I have a couple of pictures here. So here's that brick before. So here's that brick of steel before. And it's going to sink. It is way more dense than water. So if we put it in water, it's going to plummet and sink. Now, we're going to kind of flash ahead, skip all the manufacturing, and we have a boat. So now, here's our boat. Now we're kind of drawn in the arrows here for the upward force. And it's a very pretty boat. Uh, Arnold, would you, on a scale of zero to, you know, zero to 10, what would you rate my, my nice drawing there? Zero. A zero? I can't even get a one? Nothing? Okay, well, gee, thanks a lot there, Arnold. Um, so, we have our boat, and now it is floating on the water. What we've done is we've changed that volume. We've increased the volume by a lot. It's, it takes up much more space. And if it takes up enough space, the density becomes less than water and it's going to float. So when you engineer boats or barges, 
they're engineered in a very specific way to they really maximize the amount of volume they create and so that way they displace more water and that way they float but when they take on too much water, it's about a boat taking on water then again that density will change, it will become greater and it will sink if you've ever been into a boat, even a canoe a canoe is very hollowed out, the ends are oftentimes filled with air so they can create more volume, creating more space and that way even though it's made of steel oftentimes or metal um, it doesn't sink because we've changed that volume, we've changed the way the shape of the boat so that it displaces enough water so that it, it can float. So, eighth grade. From here, I'm going to stop. Thank you guys for watching. Um, Arnold, any last any last words there? No. Y are you sure? No. Do you want to say goodbye? Hasta la vista, baby. Okay. Well, it's good to see you too again, Arnold, as always. So, eighth grade, I thank you for watching this. Um, and we will see you along the way.